How's it going folks and welcome back. It's episode number 76 today of Park 2 Primera today. We got a transfer special for you all. It is the end of season number 8, the start I guess of season number 9. If you missed yesterday's episode, Champions League final, kind of a big deal. Maybe go watch that before you watch this one. Today we're going to get busy, we're going to get down to business and as you can see it is the 1st of July in game. That means some players have come and some players have gone. Um, mm, uh, Ellis Corridor has gone. Uh, good player. Good, great player, some will argue in the comments section. But at 22 years old, he really hadn't improved for us. He came to us at a very tender age. We developed him, you know, quite patiently over a number of years. But he was always a fringe player on the team. He had one year left on his contract PSG came in with a mammoth offer of £60 million. I can't turn down that kind of money for a backup player who sat on the bench. So away he has gone. Uh, I mean, any player who that kind of bid had kept coming for would have been under consideration. The other man who's left us, we kind of already knew this was happening, but Fabian Velez has left us to join Inter Milan. Of course, he was a, an ever-present part of our team when we first started really finding our feet, I suppose, in La Liga. This year just gone, he had a particularly good season, although worth noting um, the 16 games he played in the league were against the weaker teams in the league because of the way in which we rotated the team. Ultimately, £51 million. He was going into the last year of his contract. He wasn't a particularly happy bunny. And while with those two departures, if we just look at the transfer history here, we've made £111 million for two players who were on the bench a lot this last year. So I do feel like upon reflection, it kind of makes sense. Of course, they're not the only players that have kind of been involved in moves upon the transfer window opening. Um, one set of players that we do have are a load of young Danish players, such as Johan Jakobsen, such as Mads Tulberg, um, such as Tommy Hugard. Um, truth be told, these guys are never going to get near the first team. I mean, they, I, okay, maybe I'm writing them off too soon. They could do, but really, I've signed them just to be a bit of squad depth in our youth team. Um, Shu here um, signed him before I scouted him. Should have, scout should have scouted him. We'll learn from that lesson. Um, but these players are all 16 or 17. They're going to go straight into the under-19s team, which has been a little bit on the light side in recent years. And of course, our B team were promoted, and they've now up into the second tier of Spain, which is pretty big. This is a really good level of football our young players to be able to develop at. Um, obviously, in Football Manager, I find that your players get to a certain level if you're managing in, say, England, and then you feel this need to loan them out. You need to give them that regular first-team football, and you lose, obviously, the ability to control their training with that. We don't have that here. We have a team that sits in the second tier, a team that I'm hoping will be the best team in the second tier, and I'm going to use it to the extreme. I'm going to use it to have my young players develop at whilst controlling their coaching, ensuring they're playing regular first-team football at a senior level, and uh, I think it's going to hopefully work out in our favour. Uh, in terms of transfers that are slightly more significant, Benny Perez has finally joined us, a Mexican centre mid who we signed for his potential a number of years ago. We had to wait for him to turn 18 for him to finally join us. He's not really developed since we first saw him, so he is going to be a player who's probably going to be down with the B team. Hopefully he won't be too mad about that. He could turn into a good player, though he's got some really, really good potential. I mean, there's a reason we signed him at the end of the day. But perhaps the most notable of the additions on the ins, and a man who's actually going to play in the first team, is Francisco Conceição, the Portuguese international, of course, signed on a freebie from Real Madrid. I feel like we've talked about his arrival for a little while. He is finally here. I'm pretty excited about it. So in terms of going into the new season, here is how the squad looks right now. I think in terms of best 11. Of course, these things are always subject to change. The big new addition, of course, being Conce Sao out on the left-hand side. He is an elite winger, left-only footedness. I think he can be a really, really good player out there. I am aware, I believe, in real life for Porto, he plays out on the right. So that is something that we could certainly utilise with him. But with him joining us as a winger, we're going to ditch the inside forward out on the left-hand side, Amira Pedro Porro. Um, over the course of this year, I feel like Pedro Porro did really, really well in the winger role for us in a way that I've never really seen in this system from the inside forward. I feel like inside forwards in Football Manager are a bit hit and miss this year. We've tried with a whole load of different players and it's never really worked. Conce Sal comes in, he's left-footed, he can play on the left wing, he's a natural there, he's an elite winger. 
it just makes a lot of sense to put him out there. And of course, our main striker in Siapina is a man who is happily going to gobble up crosses and just win stuff in the air. Um, so I don't feel like, you know, switching to a winger is necessarily a concern for that reason either. Um, in terms of the team as a whole, we're not really missing a great deal. Of course, Velez and Corridor were good backup players. Um, if I was to look at where I want to add players going into today's transfer special, I feel like Galaretta, his time might be up. We may come to that in a moment. Um, but with Velez moving on, Galaretta may find himself as our third choice centre-back as I look to upgrade him a little bit. Don't get me wrong, he's a really, really good defender, but he's a very limited defender. Um, he's been a very loyal servant to the club over the years, but I mean, I mean when you compare him to Gavardiol, there's a significant difference, I suppose, in the overall quality of the defender, uh, you know, as a, as a footballer. And I found someone who I quite like the look of. Elsewhere in the team, um, we are, of course, if we sign a new centre-back, going to be covering, I suppose, Velez there. There is still the, the small matter of Corridor, who, of course, was our backup defensive mid and our backup right-back. Now, of course, I have got Taliso for one more year. He is getting on a little bit, so I'm certainly not opposed to the idea of bringing in a brand new um, centre-defensive mid, so he's kind of going to fulfil Corridor's role in the team, but also you know, act as the, the successor to Taliso on the bench. But we may also need to look at a right back because whilst I have got Pedro Porro who can play right back and of course Thomas Estevez starts, we're probably going to need another plan B there. So on the shopping list for this transfer window, centre back, a right back. And besides that, we're kind of going to see, I think, where the market leads us. We've got £155 million in the bank, which is a monster amount of money. £96 million of that is transfer budget, although right now, with the Conse Sau edition, we are way over the wage budget, so I'm going to shuffle um, some money over. So, realistically, probably got about £80 million to spend, which is still not a bad sum of money at all. But if, a, you know, if the right offer came in for the right man, we could look to flip them on to maybe reinvest into the team elsewhere. All in all, though, we relied on the entire squad a lot last year. Besides replacing Velez and Corridor, uh, I don't have that many more concerns. There's not like a position where I look at it and go, we weren't good enough there last year. We won a domestic double. We got to a Champions League final. I feel like transfer windows now, for the most part, become about adding that final bit of quality. Um, hopefully we're going to be able to go out there and find it. And well, um, you can see here, I have got a few offers for players. I have had a bid for Ramadani from PSG. He's just signed a new deal at the club on £115,000 a week. I don't really want to sell Ramadani. He's been so, so reliable for us, but I do feel like a bid of £48 million is kind of almost insulting. So I'm just going to ask for his release clause. He literally signed his new contract uh, seven days ago. So the fact they're coming in for him now is a little bit surprising. We are going to just up his asking price, I think, to his release clause. Don't expect Ramadani to be one of those men we're moving on. Now on the ins, I have found a potential target. I'm very, very tempted to go for him as well. And the man I'm looking at is Gianluca Petrozuolo. That is a mouthful and a half, isn't it? We might have to come up with a nickname for him. Uh, he is 19 years old. He is an Italian full international at centre-back, he's absolutely insane. I do wish he was a little bit quicker, but at 19, he's got so much time to potentially improve. I have negotiated a £53 million deal for him. He's played a lot of football in Serie A over the last couple of years, at a very senior level, and done well for Cagliari at that. Hence the fact, I suppose, he's in the national team. Talked about that need to maybe move on from Galaretta. Um, here you can see a direct comparison between him and Galaretta. Galaretta has really good physicals, okay mentals, and the defensive technicals needed. I do think with Gianluca here, we've got a player who's so good with the ball at his feet. He's a natural born leader. He's aggressive. He's composed. He has good decision making, good determination, great natural fitness. And because of his age and because of the potential that he does have, I do kind of want to believe that he could, you know, still improve his physicals quite significantly. He is also really, really consistent. You know what? I, fe I felt like I was setting this up like there's a decision to be made here. The more I'm talking about him, the more I'm looking at him, there isn't really a decision to be made here. If you're wondering in terms of how I found him, um, I was just looking at player searches. And this is a player search that I recommend people do. I think it's a pretty effective one is to have age at most 19, and then we don't need a second age one. Instead, we go down to international, international caps at least one. And then just look at the young players who have been getting international caps, and you will find 
some surprisingly good players here. I don't think I actually looked at the 20-year-olds. Maybe I should get some scout reports on them as well. But just looking through this list, um, there were some really, really good players. I realise now he's not showing up as a realistic transfer because we've negotiated the deal for him. I just have to ask to confirm it. But there are some really interesting players here like Marazga. That's definitely not how you say his name. 19 years old, six caps for Belgium. I did consider him as a possible addition. I don't know if we need anyone in the final third. Also, he's inconsistent, which we hate. Um, there was this guy, Ekwala who is a Cameroonian international goalkeeper playing for Club Bruges. He is a very, very good goalkeeper, but he's got a release clause. What was his release clause? 41 million, and that is what they want. I don't think you can justify splurging 41 million pounds on him. I mean, I, I, I maybe I should scout him a little bit more, see if we can work out if he's consistent or not, but... He's still very, very good. The price tag's a shame, but it gives you an idea of some of the players you can kind of come across through this method. Of course, some of these players are already signed with all the big teams. Players like Joel Davis just playing for Man City. 19-year-old model citizen, English international. It's just not fair, is it? These players don't exist in my save games in England. Anyway, after all of that, I'm going to... I'm going to start... I'm going to... Ask for uh, confirmation and sign him. Is it an expensive deal? Yes. We've got to consider that we sold Velez for £51 million. This man is joining us for £53 million. So for £2 million more, I mean, there's the head-to-head -head comparison of the two players. It's just a no-brainer, isn't it? And he can go straight into the first team. It does mean, sadly, um, I don't want to tell him aloud, Galaretta's going to end up on the bench here. But make no mistake, we have just an absolutely top quality centre-back. He's 19 with 16 leadership. He's future captaincy material. It's not going to be a transfer, I regret, I don't think. So I realise now, without hitting continue too many times, we have now solved the, the problem that I thought I had at centre-back. So now, really, it's all about finding the backup right-back, the backup defensive mid. I have had a, a little poke around, you know, just what's available um, when it comes to right backs, it's tricky because I'm looking for someone who is happy to join us and be a backup. Um, there's a couple of players who stood out to me. James Justin was transfer listed, but at 53 million, it's quite expensive for a player on the bench. There's also Wilfred Singo here, who I did consider potentially as even a centre back option. He is absolutely crazy, this guy. 27 years old, um, plays for Leipzig. Amazing, amazing physicals. Um, in an ideal world, I'd quite like to find someone who can play right back and will also sit on the bench uh, and you know be able to slot in at defensive mid. But I do realise I'm asking for quite a lot there. So maybe we're looking for the backup right back, but also the replacement to Taliso, someone who's a, a quite complete centre mid. Of course, we've also got Calder on, who's kind of a backup centre mid. I suppose one thing we've not acknowledged is right now I've got Pablo Torre outside of the match squad. The reason for that being is kind of want to send him back to Bayern. I kind of want to send him back to... I mean, look, he's a hometown hero, but last year, Hannibal just eclipsed him. He's been on loan to us for the last however many years. It's a lot of years. Uh, he signed a new deal not that long ago with Bayern uh, on £230,000 a week. It goes up to £400,000 if he plays five international games. The likelihood of this man... Ever signing for me permanently feels slim to none at this point. I feel like he's done his service to the club. I have still got him for another year. I'm trying to, I suppose, just plan for life without him. I'd love to know in the comments, would you just send him home? Is that the kindest thing to do? I mean, we have Hannibal now, so he's not really needed, is he? Anyway, I've spent almost 15 minutes here setting the scene for this transfer window. Let's actually start getting into it. Now, I have made a bit of a mistake here because I've sat down to start the transfer window um, kind of late in the day. So there is a risk that I have to do this over two days. So don't be alarmed if I just randomly transform overnight. I mean, it will still be me. I might just be wearing a slightly different getup. Um, but no, let's see how we get on here. There's going to be lots of stuff I'm sure happening some bids that come in for players I don't really want to let go. Also, as you can see here, I've done my annual pilgrimage where I'll go to the, the youth teams of Brazil. I'll hit control A, select them all and right click and just hit get scout report. I realize, can I cancel this? Cancel this? I've just scouted all of these. We don't need to scout them again. Um, but yeah, lots of scout reports coming in for Brazilian wonder kids. Um, 
If any of them stand out, I'll let you know. I say as this guy kind of stands out. 18 years old. Um, okay, he's not that good. I saw, I saw the recommendation of 80. I've seen the potential. Uh, you know, we'll give, we'll give him another scout. Actually, that's one thing I should talk about. Goalkeepers. I'm sorry, we're not going forward yet. Um, goalkeepers. I have a goalkeeper in my youth team who could be the future Vicera, I say this, his potential is questionable, but he's come through our academy. He's 19 years old. He's probably good enough to be the backup for us this year if I wanted him to be ahead of Machado. Is that is that blasphemy? I feel like I forget Machado's here because he's been here for so long. But yeah, you can see the comparison between the two of them. I, maybe, maybe Machado is a little bit better. But the long and short of it is we've got Vicera. He's coming through the academy. He looks like a pretty solid goalkeeper. Um, there are, I guess, other players here who I need to weigh up the future of. Players like Wanderley, players like Boraquez here, um, Esteban Flores as well, of course, we signed very, very recently last summer. At the same time, I don't think there's any harm in any of these players spending another year in the B team. I can control their training, give them regular first-team football at a, a really good level. Um and kind of monitor their development. Worth noting, Oliver, you may remember him. We signed him last year for 900k. Got 20 goals in 31 appearances in the league. He is a man who, at some point next year, I would not mind giving a little run in the first team. He's only 16. He's really, really well-rounded for his age. Um, could be one for the future. Right, anyway, I am going to start going forward because I've said that twice and we've unsuccessfully managed to do it. I will rejoin you when transfer bids are happening. Players that I like the look of are being signed. Some of that pre-season goodness. Get comfy, buckle up. Let's see what we can do in the market. I was having a look through uh, players who were released, you know, the end of their contracts, just seeing who's a free agent. I found someone who's a right back and a defensive midfielder. I mean, they tick two of the boxes for Corridor's replacement. Um, it is Sergio Roberto. Uh, I, he's not very good though, is he? Um, I'll, show, I'll give you an idea of the kind of players we've got here. There is, don't be alarmed by the fact that Mendy's got an orange name. I might have offered him, but we'll come to that in a moment. Um, there's a few players here who are available. Players at Alaba, I think we talked about him not that long ago. He's not bad. Amiri, aged 31, maybe got a few years left in him. Um, with these players, I've actually got them sorted by world reputation. Um, but there's plenty of household names here. I saw Soul, aged 33, and thought, oh, maybe he could be good. Nah, nah, look, what happened? What? How has he declined so much as a player? It's kind of crazy. Um, I have looked through some of these other players. Yao Cancelo? No, I, I, I don't think so either. But there is, one, there is one player who I have thought about signing and I have given an offer to, and it's Mendy. Now, look, ignore the fact he can't run. He's a goalkeeper. He doesn't need to. He, look, don't, he's not a sweeper goalkeeper, and uh, the agility doesn't matter. It, Okay, agi the agility kind of does matter. But as a backup goalkeeper who's happy to sign for £19,000 a week, are you going to find anyone better? I'd, I don't think you are. I don't think you are. And we've got Machado, who's fine. Don't get me wrong. I mean, if we just compare Mendy and Machado, he's, I'd argue that he's a little bit better. But we've got Coke Vegas, who's just been sat around for a while. He's not even really good enough for the B team. His contract's up at the end of next year, and I kind of just want to let him go. Um... I think Mendy's his replacement. That's right. I'm replacing the 32-year-old goalkeeper who I think is getting on a bit too much with a with a 36-year-old goalkeeper. Look, don't question the logic. Mendy would be a great addition. You can't convince me otherwise. Okay, someone has caught my eye, and I'm not sure why they've cut, caught my eye, really, but Jimmy Gallini plays for Fiorentina, capped for Italy. He's 22 and his contract's up at the end of next year. He's transfer listed. He can play left wing back, but not left back. And he can also kind of play right back. I'm looking at him. Am I crazy thinking he's really, really good? And also, the fact that he's got left footedness rather than left only makes me think, could I train him to play right back? And then once he learns that, I train him to play left back and he becomes that ultimate kind of utility man that every team needs who can play left back and right back. I mean, the more I talk about it, the more it feels like a good idea. To be honest, he's so good. He is not a million miles away from Edgar Perez, who's our current left back. I mean, you can see here Perez is in blue. Uh, Galini is in green. And Galini is available for 27 million. Now, with already having signed one man, uh, our transfer budget now sits at 23 million. So what it would mean is if I sign Galini which I don't really want to do for the for the amount that they want, so I'm going to try and negotiate a little bit. But if I sign Galini for the 27 million, 
It's probably going to be on my transfer budget. If I want to make further moves, I'm probably going to have to move people on equally. I don't necessarily need someone to replace Corridor's defensive midfielder capabilities because we have got Taliso. Tenali can slot in deeper if he needs to. Nianzu can. Vega can do a job at centre mid. Um, Sadu even. You could probably make a decent argument for slotting him in at ball winning midfielder if you needed to, to be honest. Ha. Huh. Am I about to just go out and sign two Italian international defenders? Because... I can. The, the answer is, I think I am. I think I am. We'll see what happens here. Okay, bit awkward. Uh, Galaretta has come and asked for improved wages. I'm just going to tell him that at the moment we can't do that. Of course, he still views himself as an important player and he does not want to be talked down in terms of how much he's playing. So one should probably let him know that Jean-Luc has probably taken his spot in the starting 11. Um, I mean, he is valued at 53 million. He has got three years left on his current deal, so there's no real reason to sell him. I'm not sure why he's trying to force a move. Esteban, mate, you've got three years left on your current deal. You're a backup. Stop stop worrying about a new deal. Mate, you're getting paid. How much is he getting paid? I mean, fifty. to be fair, 50,000 in our squad now isn't that much, but for the kind of role he's going to be playing for us, it's completely fair. He'll, he'll get over it. It'll be fine. So the current first team squad size is 26 players, I think. Yeah, 26 players right now. And that's with Pablo Torre kind of pending. The squad's actually in a really, really good spot here. This is not going to be a transfer special like last year, is it, where we're signing just a whole horde of squad players. There's a couple of players who I wouldn't mind upgrading on. Players like Vega and potentially Hardy. At the same time, they've been pretty loyal servants to the club, come up with goals when I need them to. And I, I am always a little bit wary of just signing too many players that aren't Spanish, which I know, I know to some people just doesn't bother people. But to me, I do like it when, you know, you're playing in a domestic league like in Spain, that there is a bit of a Spanish core to the team. That's why players like Luzzi, I ended up signing. Of course, in our starting eleven right now, it's really only Pedro Porro and Perez. Um, at the same time, though, I, I, the team is quite, it's, it's continental, it's Italians and French men and kind of South Americans. It's not, it's not players from coming from kind of all over the place in a super unrealistic way. It's not like I'm in the Premier League and half my squad is from Brazil, put it that way. Just based off that previous conversation, my mind went to a place where I was thinking, are there any good young Spanish players we could possibly sign? You can see here a whole host of kind of young prospects of the future that I've scouted out who probably will end up being pretty good players. In terms of the ones which I could realistically sign, I mean, of course, release clauses are always mandatory. So occasionally there are bargains available. Um, whether or not any of these are going to actually end up being bargains, I suppose, remains to be seen. I mean, there's a couple of players here, like Diego Martinez, valued at 4.8 million, who... Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, he looks pretty good at centre mid. I suppose the issue is that this transfer window, I don't know if I'm going to have £4.8 million spare, which is a little bit sad. Um, you can see here, only the top few players ready here are actually scouted. I think this is based on scouting the national youth teams, but I've already selected all of these players to have a little scout about at. Uh, you know, I do like to look for good players for the future, a bit like Oliver we signed last year he was kind of a standout player who popped up on our radar as someone we could afford good release clause um if someone like that pops up again maybe i'll go for them um still waiting on an answer for galini there are also some clauses here i could possibly sell i had a look through these there's actually none that i can sell for a decent sum of money i think the closest is larue where i can sell the 40 percent profit on 22.5 million for about two million pounds but Considering he's valued at 23 million, that seems like a silly clause to sell at the moment. Okay, first bid made, first bid rejected. I'm going to up it slightly, but I'm going to lock it in again. And this time with Galini, we are going to declare some interest for transfer. I'm not going to make him my top target. I, I don't think he's that good. But, you know, we want to let him know that we want him. He's in the last year of his deal, so hopefully, maybe he will actually just force a move for us elsewhere. Pedro Porro wants a new deal. Pedro, mate, you've got a very good contract. You've been here for a year. You don't need a new deal. You don't. You think you need it. You don't need it. We can't afford it. Things aren't given away for free. And now he wants to let everyone else know about his disappointment. 
Hopefully he gets over it. Good news, everyone. Mendy wants to sign. And you know what? I'm, abs I'm absolutely going to do it. I've now got my player for the thumbnail. Right, tick, tick that off the shopping list. We've got our thumbnail signing. A D. I mean, that's that's very, that's very very harsh on Mendy. Look at how good he is. Coke Vegas, down to the B team you go, my friend. See you later. Um, elsewhere, Galini bid rejected again. I'm just going to cancel it here and see if he kicks up a fuss. Perez wants a new contract now. Breaking the wage budget to bring in Hannibal seemed like such a great idea. Lots of players have become aware maybe they're being underpaid a little. And it is turning into a little bit of a headache. Okay, potential sale alert. Sadu, a man who was kind of a squad player this year, a player who I just talked about as being a potential kind of backup ball winning midfielder. We signed him a few years ago. He's a Romanian international. Uh, this year, he played three games as a backup. And whilst he's okay, I kind of signed him really to be a fifth choice centre back. The more I look at things, though, we have got Miguel Salgado, who's in the under 19, so I can just promote to be the fifth choice centre-back. I don't feel like the fifth choice centre-back has to be particularly amazing. And to be honest, Salgado kind of does it all. And £20 million for Sadu is just... I I can't not take 20... For £20 million for a player who played three games this year, when I'm looking to maybe get a little bit of money in to reinvest elsewhere, it, it feels quite good, doesn't it? We only spent £5 million on him, so it's profit at the very least. Maybe we can use that to invest elsewhere in the squad. In the end, I have cracked on Galini. I thought about leaving it with them, but I'm just too scared of another team coming in for him. I think for £27 million, he still represents really good value for money. Um, is he the perfect solution to my right-back problem? Maybe not, because of course he is left-footed, but the fact he can play both right-back and left-wing-back makes me think that he could be a really, really vital squad option, and there's no denying the quality that he has. Wing-backs are just hard to come by in Football Manager in general. And I think for £27 million, especially with Sadu now going out, which is going to raise around £20 million, it makes it a little easier to stomach the fact that we are going to end up spending a pretty large portion of our remaining transfer budget on this man. One man who has been attracting a weirdly large amount of interest is Christian Dreyer. Um, he is, of course, one of our Danish players. We signed a couple of years ago on a free, um, hoping that maybe some of the new recruits are going to follow in his footsteps. He looks like a really good defender. I will say the fact he's injury prone and inconsistent does scare me a little bit, and he's not really improved since he joined the club. I mean, that's a lie. He has improved since he joined the club, but that was a little while ago now. Um, there's been lots of teams sniffing around interested in him. I have offered him a new contract because his release clause at the moment, I think, is quite pitiful. Yeah, it's just shy of 12 million. Um, he looks good. I'm surprised at the level of interest that he's got in him. There is a, a small amount of me that wants to, you know, sell him. Maybe if a bid came in of 12 million pounds, but... I don't know how far £12 million goes, really, if he has as much potential as, I guess, all these other teams think that he has. It just feels like an unnecessary risk to let him go for an amount of money, which isn't really going to amount to a great deal when it comes to what we can do with it. So we've just had the new season tick over. I've just told the, the board the expectations for the year. Uh, there wasn't really an option to increase it to make any kind of bigger budget. So just left it as they wanted. TV money's coming in, which is always a good thing. We've got a pretty healthy bank balance, dare I say, at the moment. £144 million sat in there. And we have also got a stadium expansion on the way. Um... Forgot to mention this earlier. Yeah, new stadium expansion, 12,000 seats. It's due to be completed for Christmas. So uh, that's my, that is the Christmas present from the chairman to everyone. Um, it does mean the current capacity is reduced, but what it's going to mean at the end of everything is uh, our new stadium is going to hold 40,000 seats. And maybe with that, we'll also fix the TV camera scenario where the roof obscures the view at the start of matches. That would That would be nice. With the new season, it also means that the league has been reset and we know our first game of the season is away from home against Atleti. Don't really love to see that. In terms of pre-season odds, we are in third behind Barcelona and Real Madrid. And uh, in the media dream 11, you can see here we've got Guardiola, Tonali and Hannibal making their way in. Suddenly, we look like a proper team, dare I say. We look like a team that actually stand out. I mean, to be fair, Real Madrid still 
kind of boss it. They've got Ortiz at right back, Penteus out on the right hand side. Up front, they've got Yusinkveld, I think is how I've been told I meant to say this name. Please let me know. Um, obviously, we've got Gurut Jagger. I, again, I think that's how it's meant to be said. It's apparently a Basque name out on the left hand side. I would love to sign this guy. I'm not signing him for his release clause, and he's valued at 61 million. I mean, I'm care how much do they want? They, they they don't want any money. I can't really blame them, to be fair. Um, but yeah, we've actually got more players actually in the Dream 11, I've noticed, than Barcelona. They've got Balde as the only other player in the Media Dream 11 from their squad. Uh, he's on a lot of money, isn't he? How does he compare to Thomas Estevez? I don't want to turn this into like, you know, a comparison mini game, but I don't know. He's not a million miles away, is he, Thomas Estevez? Which, considering he's on significantly less money, I'm, I'm going to make the argument Estevez is best, better because he's better when it comes to the apparently the attacking portion of the bar chart. Well, not bar chart. This, this is a... What is this? A scatter... No, not a scattergraph, Jack. It's called the Attribute Polygon in Game. But apparently, I've forgotten what graphs are called. This has a name. Why have I gone with bar chart and then scatter graph? I feel like I, this is what I was thinking of when I was thinking of bar chart. I was thinking of the fact there's the bars here. And of course, a scatter graph is like the stats bomb, which just doesn't exist at the moment because the season's just took out, snuck over. Um, I'm just making myself look like an idiot. Let's keep moving forward. Um, I am still hoping to get Jimmy Gallini over the line before too long. Um, that is going to be pending the sale of Sadu, which at the moment, they're the only two bits of business happening. Okay, so I can adjust the budget to accommodate the Galini edition, and, you know, let's just do that. Let's adjust the budget, make sure he gets here, just in case the Sadu deal falls through. And with that, I have my new backup right back, who's left-footed and plays left wing back. Um, that this could end up being one of my greatest ever transfer moves ever, or we might look back on it as one of the more idiotic ones. What I think it offers us is some quite nice flexibility. Uh, I have got to weigh up. Do I train him to play left back, or whenever he's on the pitch, do I just move the left back forward one spot? I've done weirder things with football manager tactics, so that might be the route we go down. What I do think it means, though, is that we've got a really, really good, talented player with some resale value, at the very least, for a bargain buy at £27.5 Um yeah, to me, to me, it's a good deal. You guys can let me know what you think. Is It's not going to go down well with the Corridor fan club who have seen Corridor replaced with this guy, but I think he's better. And just to test it, here's a head-to-head -head comparison of Galini and Corridor. Worth knowing, Corridor is currently injured. Of course, he was injury-prone. We never really experienced that firsthand. Um, according to the star ratings, Galini's better. Stars have never lied, so that's definitely accurate. In terms of the head-to-head, -head, you can see it here. I don't think there's a world of difference. Corridor's just left us for 60 million. So to sign a, a replacement of sorts for half the price, I'm I'm pretty happy with that comparison. Welcome aboard, Galini. Good luck learning your new position. Tenali, welcome him into the team. I realise now we've suddenly got this little Spanish, uh, not Spanish, Italian contingent of players emerging. Tenali, Galini, and Gianluca Petrozolo. He needs a nickname. If you've got any, I'd please answers on it. Nicknames, I need them. I can't say Petrozuolo every time I need to. That's It's too much of a mouthful. It's not possible. Bit of annoying news. Uh, the Olympics are happening, and Gianluca is going to go and play for Italy in the Olympics, which on the one hand, I'm delighted for him. On the other, I, actually, I don't know if this is... The, in England, if the player goes to the Olympics, they miss the start of the season. I don't actually know if that's going to happen here with the timings, but potentially our new centre-back, our new £53 million toy, won't be available for Atletico Madrid away to start the season. Do you remember this guy, Jugon, the, Fren the Frenchman playing for Dortmund? Looked really, really good. Well, fantastic news. Real Madrid have bid £112 million for him. Um... I hope he doesn't go to them, otherwise it just makes next season really, really difficult. It's not fair. Okay, the Sir Do deal has just come through. Um, yeah, uh, he's a fifth choice centre-back, backup defensive mid, played three games last year, and I had a player in the under-18s who's, I don't want to say he's the identical player, but he's, he's pretty similar Is Miguel Sargado in terms of his capabilities. Um I mean, said who is better, but it's £16 million in the bank, and 
that's a couple of young players, maybe even a replacement defensive mid. That is currently what I'm looking at. I, it's the, perhaps the one area of the pitch that I now look at where I think... If Kapanu gets injured, I've got Tanali who can drop slightly deeper. I've got Taliso who can come in, but at 33, is he necessarily at the end of the year going to be a player good enough for me to, to bring in? Um, and then besides that, it's just centre-backs who can play defensive mid, which to be fair, you know what? It's not the worst solution in the world, but now that we have just got a little bit of money to play with, I think, I mean, it is it really is a little bit of money. We can rejig the budget slightly. We've got £13 million to go out there and find a defensive mid. Okay, I might have found my man. Uh, he is 31, so he's not that much younger than Taliso. But remember Lucas Toussaint? If you watch Leon Live, you might remember this guy. He was like our Titanic captain at defensive mid. In a similar, not that dissimilar to this. He's currently transfer listed for £7.5 His wages aren't cheap, but for all time's sake... And the fact that he's just transfer listed here. And he's he is a very, very good ball winning specialist midfielder. I'm 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 bringing him home. He's coming with me. Now I realise the issue of signing Lucas Toussart here is he's never really gonna live up to my expectations of previous save games. They know they say you never should go back to a previous football manager player who was a hero for you, because they'll never do it again. Hannibal proved that those people wrong. He did it for me last year. Maybe Lucas Toussaint's the man to do it for me this year. Also, if we just compare him to Kapanu, he's not really a million miles away. You could make an argument. He might even be, I was going to say, you could make an argument. He'd be slightly better. Maybe you can't. They're close, though. And for 7.5 million, even if I only get two years' use out of him, that's pretty good value for money, if you ask me. Okay, um... <laughs> This this is unexpected. I've been offered the Spain national team job. I don't know if I want to take it or not. On the one hand, I could take it. On the other hand, international manager and football manager sometimes just adds extra fluff to things. Do I want to manage Spain? What is there coming up? There's a World Cup in two years. There is a World Cup in two years. Right? Because what I'm thinking is, this save game has probably got, you know, a few seasons left in it. Would ending with a World Cup be a really cool way to see out Football Manager 2021? And it, pr it probably would be. It probably would be. I have no idea when Spain's next game is. I've not done much national team management this year. But if I am going to do this, this kind of derails the transfer special. To the point where I feel like I'd want to go away, accept the job, go away. Next episode, we continue doing a little bit of transfers, but it would be mostly about getting used to what's going on at Spain. Because I do feel like, for the most part, our transfer business is kind of wrapping up once, hopefully, Toussaint joins us. Um, we've obviously been going for two and a bit weeks now. The Spain job, it could be a pretty interesting one to end things on. You can see here, we talked about their Euro... I swear we talked about their Euro group. At some point, maybe it was in the, the recap episode where we played Real Madrid in the cup final and then we looked at what else was going on. And I looked at the group that Spain were in and I kind of jokingly said, well, Spain aren't going to not make it out of that group. They have. They've lost every single game. I think I'm about to become Spain manager. This is not how I expected to... to I can't even English. This is not how I expected to end today's episode. But it is how we're going to end, today, end today's episode. I'm taking the Spain job. Look. We'll, conti we'll continue from this tomorrow. This is a lot to process. I hope you like the transfer special. It's gone off the rails. I'm sorry for it. Welcome to Spain. Work the space. I can't believe what I've just done. <laughs>